The Mariners score six unanswered to stun the Red Sox and win yet another series. Let's talk about it here on the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023. This is Tiny Gonzalez and Colby Padnode for the Locked On Mariners postgame show brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On. that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, and you'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the game. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link as well as our social accounts is in the description of this episode six to three the final score from t-mobile park mariners stunned the red Sox with six unanswered runs against one of the best bullpens in baseball and again it was really after cutter crawford came out of this game that the mariners offense exploded looking at this box score three hits for tom murphy three hits for eugenio suarez a big home run from cal raleigh that got things going Really fun game. It was frustrating for the first half, but the second half was a lot of fun. It wasn't pretty, but overall, the Mariners get another big win, another big series win. How are you feeling, Colby? I feel like this is a team worth investing in of my time, of course, right? Um, and my effort because they sure are putting out their best effort and somebody should believe in them um, because we know some people don't. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a very frustrating game for the first five, uh, you know, first five innings. Uh, Gilbert was OK. Um, you know, I, I think obviously he makes the mistake to Duran, uh, which, you know, kind of makes the entire line look a lot worse. But he still goes six, you know, gives up three. Well, uh, not a not a terrible line uh, against a pretty good Boston offense. But, uh, yeah, he was he was pretty good, kept him in it. And, and, you know, I think maybe an underrated part of this. This uh, this game was uh, Gilbert able to limit the damage with runners on first and third and nobody out in the fifth. Um, and he was only he only gave up one out of that and, and kept it a three nothing game. And then, of course, uh, Cal Raleigh comes up, you know, a couple innings later, hits the big two run homer and they're right back in it. So. Um, Really frustrating game, sure, but what we've seen lately is we've seen this offense, if the pitching can keep them close, they are putting up more they're putting up big innings more frequently. Um, whereas in the past it was maybe, you know, you get them in the first and then that's it. Uh, but we've seen them come through and get this big inning. And usually it's not because they're clubbing home runs, it's just because they're keeping the line moving. And that's what we saw in the seventh. Um, you know, you put the you put the the ball in play, good things happen. You 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 run out some athletic guys, some, some speed guys mixing some power and, and, you know, a three run lead is not something that's, you know, the end of the road, like it was in, in May or, or June even. So yeah, the Mariners certainly playing much better since July one. Uh, and today was, you know, a kind of a come from behind victory that we've seen a lot more frequently, uh, recently. And, and, you know, it's capped off with, you know, the Red Sox opening Pandora's box and chaos ball being, unrained on t-mobile uh t-mobile park and and the mariners are experts at playing with chaos and, and the red sox not so much um so yeah it was it was certainly a, a frustrating uh first half a really fun second half uh obviously capped off by the raleigh home run the the julio stealing home and and mm-hmm. them running the little trick play or whatever you want to call it to, to steal a run there uh the little infield single which they're still calling it for julio on a ground ball that went like a slow roller that went between two Red Sox. Um, yeah. Right through it, the five hole. Yep. Five hole. <laughs> uh, boys protected the barn. So that's right. Uh, yeah. It's just one of those things where it was, it was fun to see. And then on top of that, you know, before, before the seventh, we got good Matt Brash, which is always fun. And yeah. then in the, and then in the bottom of the ninth, 
we got good Andres Munoz, which yeah. I don't know how many times we've had good Brash and good Munoz in the same game, but good Lord, those guys, when they are on, whew, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was a very frustrating first half, but can you win the game in the first half, Ty? No. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to cut it off there. <laughs> but uh yeah it was it was a lot of fun uh and it, it's a big serious win because the red sox are directly in front of you it's yep. only a net of one game uh because two out of three but the other thing you do is you put yourself in a pretty good position to own the tiebreaker against them because the tiebreaker for the tiebreaker um is interdivision record and you right. and the red sox believe it or not have the same interdivision record but obviously mm -hmm. the red sox play the al east you play the al west mm -hmm. So they have a pretty decent shot to have the tiebreaker against both them and Toronto. You're going to have it over Toronto. Toronto is like seven and 22 against the ALE. So you got that one against Toronto. There's a good shot. You have it against Boston too. And it's their fourth series win in a row, uh, you know, in, in a stretch that's been pretty difficult. There's some really good teams that they're playing right yeah. now and they've won four straight series and, you know, they'll have another difficult test uh, this weekend, but they're going down there with a series win and, and, you know, uh, uh, once again, they <laughs> so close to a sweep. They needed like one extra hit uh, and they probably have a sweep, but uh, that's how close they are right now to rattling off like a, a 10 game winning streak. So we'll see what they can do against Otani tomorrow. It's a big series against the angels. You got to at least split. You have to split at least. Uh, because, Where can you catch that series Colby? Uh, Sirius XM via the that's XFM right. app. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. There we go. Yeah. So go. yeah, it was, it was a, uh, it was fun. Uh, Fun last hour or so of that ball game. The first, you know, hour and a half, a lot of frustrating at bats. But hey, you know, you just win. It is, it is what it is, and yeah, they just won. Uh, doesn't matter what the uh, journey looks like. Destination is uh, pretty sweet. Another series win for the Mariners. Uh, and I want to make sure that we give a, a you know big ups to Cade Marlowe for his huge moment in this game. Uh, but I want to save that for a little bit later on. For now, I want to ask you about Cal Raleigh because uh, um, you know he had really struggled for a little while, not too long ago. Uh, but since July 22nd, basically that Toronto series where he just dominated the Blue Jays. Uh, he's been smoking the ball 333, 389, 788, 223 WRC plus heading into today. And then, of course, had that 10 pitch at bat with the two run home run that uh, broke the uh, scoreless um, streak for the for the Mariners to start this game. Um, is this playoff Raleigh? Is this 2022 Raleigh we're seeing? Is he back like fully? Are we finally seeing the guy that we thought he could ultimately be this season? I mean, the interesting thing about Raleigh is that his numbers are pretty much the same as they were last year. Yeah. With, you know, the notable exception. I'm not sure how it is now, but as of a few weeks ago, uh, with the notable exception of slugging percentage, uh, right. just not doing quite as much damage. Well, he has for the last two weeks. And yeah, I think this is the closest we've seen uh, to, to play off Raleigh. Um, you know, since obviously the, the Toronto series. So, um, yeah, he looks good, um, which is nice because, you know, you, you're, you're still a bat short. Go fix that, I guess. And uh, Raleigh is it Raleigh has the potential to be that bat. So uh, with mm -hmm. him and, and Murphy swinging it like they are, you got to put them both in the lineup as often as you can. Uh, and Raleigh is a guy who. Um, I don't know if he's quite the guy that can carry your offense for a couple of weeks, but he can come pretty close. And and with the way he's hitting, with the way Murphy's hitting, with the way Gino's been hitting for the last month or so, uh, you really need you really need that to continue because Tay Oscar's uh, hit the skids a little bit. Ty yep. France has been bad for the last six weeks, give or take. Sure. Um, so yeah, you you need guys to step up. Mike Ford has like. The, the clock has struck midnight on Mike Ford until he hits the three run homer off of Otani to beat him tomorrow. Um, right. So yeah, you, you need guys to step up and, and they are. And, and uh, it's, it's a welcome sight because Cal Raleigh does have the type of power who can change that can change the game uh, in one yep. swing of the bat. So desperately needed. And, you know, most of it comes from the left side, which is also something you need. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's really nice to see. Uh, this has uh, been a, 
a, a big part of this offensive turnaround for the Mariners as of late, and that's that's the reason that they're playing as well as they are right now. That's a big reason for it, at least. Uh, so yeah, so I want to ask you about Cade Marlowe and talk about his big moment in this game. I also, you know, it's very, very, very early. It's only been two games for Dominic Canzone, one for Josh Rojas, but I do want to get your impressions of the new guys, and we'll also talk a little bit about Logan Gilbert in this game in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners postgame show is brought to you by Sleeper. Are you using the Sleeper app for daily fantasy baseball? When it times your money by 100, Sleeper is now offering up to a 100 times payout for up to eight pick contests. Choose as many as eight players that you like and pick more or less on your favorite baseball stats like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right and you can win big. If you think Julio's going yard, add him to your lineup. If you think Luis Castillo's striking out six or more, add him to your lineup. Making your picks is easy and takes only 30 seconds or less. And if you win, you can withdraw your payouts safe and quickly. Use promo code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N, and you'll get up to a hundred dollars matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over thirty states. Check out Sleeper today. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners post game show. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners defeated the Red Sox six to three this afternoon at T-Mobile Park. They are hitting the road once again. Yes, a very very short homestand for the Mariners. Weird schedule. We've talked a little bit about that on our Patreon show. Uh, but yeah, four game series starting in Anaheim tomorrow. You can catch all the action on the Mariners hometown broadcast of SiriusXM via the SXM app. Uh, so Cade Marlowe pinch hit for Dylan Moore in this game. Uh, runners at first and second. Uh, Dominic Canzone started the rally with a four pitch walk, uh, and Tom Murphy had a had another hit, his third of the day. He had four hard hit balls this afternoon. Tom Murphy is a hitting god right now, uh, and Marlowe working against a. Another tough lefty after he had that big time triple in Arizona against Andrew Chafin on Saturday. Comes back with a single past the diving second baseman to tie this game up at three apiece. And Cade Marlowe just continues to be incredibly impressive for me. Now it's been a very small sample size. I think he I, I think you mentioned off air that he's only around. 18 at bats something like that 20 plate appearances somewhere in that range uh, i haven't checked for myself but again very small sample size and of course you know the league is going to eventually adjust to him but for now what have been your impressions of cade marlowe so far hey, marlowe yeah uh, he's been eight um <laughs> You know, eh, just running a 180 WRC plus. Right. Uh, so, eh, you know, not great, not terrible, but sure, uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the thing that's been most surprising so far is uh, five walks, five strikeouts in uh, 31 plate appearances. Oh, it's 31 uh, plate appearances. There yeah. we go. Okay. So, yeah, um, because Marlo coming up, and, and part of the reason why he never was a super high prospect despite his, you know, raw numbers um, is that he had strikeout problems uh, at triple a and honestly at double a, they were high, they were 30%. And this was a guy who was, you know, 25, 26. Like he, it's not like he was a 21 year old who was struggling to make contact at triple a he's age appropriate for that league. Um, and he just wasn't, wasn't, you know, producing at the like 38% strikeout rate last year. Mm -hmm. And this year it was, it was only at 25.4. But that's because it dropped dramatically in June. So yeah. could he continue that? Could he continue to put the ball in play with more frequency? And the answer so far has been yes. Again, small sample, 31 plate appearances. That is like 140th of a season or 120th of a season. Like, sure. we don't we know. We love to do math here on the Locked On sure. podcast. Live, yeah. yep. yep. Um, but 18 plate yeah. appearances. It turned out it was 31. Jeez. Yeah, you know. sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. But again, he's walking, he's having good at bats. He's uh, drawing out at bats. Even when he's making outs, they're typically good outs. They're typically outs that come from working the count. Um, you know, and, and he's, he can draw a walk. He's got some, he's got some pop. We know he does. Um, you know, he's, he's got his first big league home run. We've seen him hit a triple mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen him handle lefties, which is 
you know, a somewhat surprise because he wasn't putting up gaudy numbers against them in AAA. So, yeah. uh, Marlo to me, you know, pretty good athlete runs well, not the, not the best looking defensive player right now. It's some weird routes at times, but you know, which is weird because all that I heard about with Cade Marlowe in the past, especially the la- like the last couple of years, was yeah, he's a good defender, good base runner. Like that's who he'll be. Like he might not hit, but he'll be a you know, good fourth outfielder, late game defensive replacement, late game, you know, yeah, substitution on the base pass. But yeah, that hasn't Certainly really not. been the case. <laughs> yeah, that really hasn't been the case no. defensively. Uh, he also got pinch ran for by uh, Jose Caballero in this game. I think that was um, just cabbies a little bit faster, but also, and because you're going to make that swap anyways, like obviously sure. Cade Marlowe's not going to go play second base. So just get the the guy who's a little bit faster out there yeah. and maybe not even faster, but a better base runner. Caballero is a better base stealer than, than Marlowe is not yeah. that Marlowe's bad at it. Just Caballero is better at it. So I think sure. that's all that was, but yeah, overall, you know, I've been pretty impressed. Um, you know, Marlowe is going to, you know, climb the the prospect ranks a little bit uh, until he graduates off. Uh, and if he continues to play like this, it's a pretty good chance he graduates that list by the end of the year, because mm-hmm. right now there's really no reason to not put Marlowe in the lineup as often as you can. He's one, been one of your better hitters. He's given you some of the best at-bats you've got. So uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see what they do this weekend. I think they're facing two lefties. So we'll see if they want to, you know, try and, and get them, you know, at bats against them or if they want to put them on the bench, we'll see. But I would uh, like to see them do that. I would like to see, uh, I would like to test this and see if he can actually hit lefties a bit. Well, I mean, they're not overpowering lefties. So maybe you give yeah. them one like Tyler yeah. Anderson, maybe, in, <laughs> maybe you bench him against Detmers and you let him hit against Anderson. We'll see. But mm-hmm. yeah, overall, Marlo has been, you know, really impressive and, and he looks like a legitimate big leaguer and, and we'll see how that pans out over the next, what, 54 games. I think they have left. So Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. There's definitely a possibility the Mariners have found, you know, at least somebody who's in the number four outfield mix next year that you would feel pretty good about right away. So we'll see, but the Mariners could be two and a half games out of the third wall card by tonight. As we're recording this, the Blue Jays are up one to nothing over the Baltimore Orioles, but the Orioles are threatening right now. Runner on second, one out in the top of the fifth. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. But again, by the end of the night, the Mariners could be two and a half back of a playoff spot, which would be really, really, really nice. They had a really nice opportunity last night, but uh, weren't able to capitalize on that. But uh, yeah. All right. So again, it's been very, very, very small sample size. The smallest of small sample sizes with Dominic Canzone and Josh Rojas, the two new guys. Uh, that came over in the Paul Seawald trade. Canzone has gotten two starts uh, over the last two games, and uh, Rojas started last night at second base, got today off. Uh, any impressions of those two guys, if you know, if at all? Like, any thoughts on them? Josh Rojas seems like a nice guy. Um, mm. Canzone. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's been fine, but it's like what eight plate appearances. I'm not yeah. basing anything off of eight. Uh, yeah. had a couple of nice at bats last night, uh, in yep. his debut, a couple um, hard hit balls. Yeah. Yeah. Into the, you know, double into the, the left center gap. He also had another hard hit fly ball out yep. there, uh, you know, failed pretty epically with the bases juice and nobody out, which, you know, turned out to be the difference of the game, but he's fine. He drew a walk today. Like he, he looks like a, a major leaguer. Like he's doesn't sure. look like he's overwhelmed and, and, yeah, I think Canzone is is probably going to be, um, you know, he's. I feel I feel pretty confident that he's at least going to give you a solid at bat. Right. Um, you know, beyond that, I don't know. I haven't seen him enough. I haven't tracked his career enough that I don't. I don't have a good feel on him quite yet. But uh, yeah, um, I think he's fine. Uh, I think he'll get a lot of playing time here down the stretch. Uh, we'll see what they want to do. We you know against lefties and whatnot again. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Rojas. Man, he he could be one of the biggest uh, X factors uh, going down the stretch here because if he is even just a league average bat the rest of the year, uh, that's a massive upgrade over what you yeah. were getting from you know your strong side platoon at second base, anyways. So we'll see. You know, I don't want to I don't want to kill the guy for four at bats, even though they were four terrible at bats. But um, it's four at yeah, bats. He, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's having a terrible year, but he's also been battling injury a little bit, so. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll see. I don't want to write him off, but <laughs> to say that I was impressed with anything Rojas did uh, so far would be a lie. And yeah, that yeah. makes sense because it's only been one game. So, yeah. 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 You know, overall, Canzone looks fine, but I do think people are overblowing his athleticism a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't look particularly athletic out in right field last night. Um, I didn't really yeah. notice anything today in left field, but like yeah. he when he was like running a- down the, the, Casas ball or the double the Casas double last night uh, and the throw in was kind of eh. uh, and then like the the attempt on the grab on the ground rule double by what was it Arroyo mm-hmm. that was a little awkward looking but yeah, yeah. whatever uh, I like the the call on on Seth Smith though I actually do like that I didn't I didn't like it at first but I <laughs> I I started to think about it and then I was like yeah Dude, actually that makes a lot of sense 266 340 like 460 yeah. or 447 career slash line in Tyson and you're like oh that's not a very like, good major I like, leaguer I was like eh. and then no it, was, it, it, it actually made a lot of sense yeah yeah so that's, that's, that's <laughs> like, good that slash line is like 20 points above league average and batting average on base and slugging yeah yeah <laughs> like, yeah I think if I think if you well, really excuse like, me for not being aware of Seth Smith's career slash line. How could you not be? He was played here for like two years. Um, yeah, like yeah, I think six years ago. <laughs> I think if everything really like hits for Canzone, like the power fully develops and all that stuff, there's a shot that he's Conforto. Mm-hmm. But I think Seth Smith is probably he even kind of has a stance like like Smith like his his batting stance looks so unathletic. Like it's all just like gangly and he's just kind of like falling over the plate, but he can cover the entire zone, man. He's, he's able to adjust his swing. Yeah. Um, it's not a groove swing or anything like that. Like he, he can go get the high pitch he can go get the low. He can cover the plate. So it works for him. Uh, he's much uh, frailer looking than I, I think you probably expect right away for a, a corner outfielder. You kind of think like that's sure. a bigger, well put together dude. I uh, know no. <laughs> he's a frail looking guy, but he's got bat speed and, and, He'll he'll hit some impressive dingers down the stretch here. I guarantee yeah. you that because he he the bat speed is legit and the plate coverage skills are are very real. So I, I think he'll be pretty solid the rest of the way. But it's tough to know, man. He's a rookie. You just don't know. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners post game show. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners six to three victory over the Boston Red Sox. You can catch. The Mariners and the Angels starting tomorrow and through the weekend on the Mariners' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Uh, so Logan Gilbert started this game. Uh, we haven't talked about him yet. We're 22 minutes into the show and haven't even talked about the uh, the Mariners' starter for the day. He goes six innings pitch, three earned runs, five hits, five strikeouts, three walks, uh, the two-run home run allowed to Jaron Duran. Quite a few hard hit balls. Um, wasn't a great start for Logan Gilbert. What did you think? I thought it was okay. Um, Seventeen whiffs, not a, not a terrible number. Uh, mm-hmm. Slider was was his best pitch today. Um, you know, he was able to throw it in the strike zone for strikes. He got whiffs on it too. Uh, slider was really the best pitch, and, and the fastball mm, wasn't amazing. Command with it, uh, ran some deep counts early on. Uh, made the mistake to Duran on, on the splitter. Um, so, you know, it's the two run Homer and, and the other five innings, he gives up one run. Like I know it doesn't exactly work that way, but six innings, three runs against this offense without your best stuff. It's not bad. Like he, he gave you a real shot to win that game and and you did. Um, so I thought Logan was fine. Like, I I don't want to kill the guy. He was, he wasn't great. Like there don't like the whole idea, like, Oh, he was better than his, his line indicated. No, no, he wasn't. He was probably about as good as his, as his line indicated. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that he does deserve some credit again for, uh, you know, not letting that game get out of hand because they had Boston had a shot to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the top of the sixth or top of the fifth runners on first and third, nobody out. Um, and he only gives up the one run, yeah. uh, you know, and twice in that inning, he had runners on first and third with less than two outs. And he was only he only gave up the one run. So. Mm-hmm. That's big because, uh, you know, if they score two or three there, now the hole is just feels insurmountable. Uh, yeah. and it changes the entire game. So you got to give Gilbert some credit there for kind of bulldogging his way through for on sure. a day where he didn't really have his best stuff. So, yeah. 
um, and you know, against the lineup that that's kind of humming right now. So I, I think it's, you know, worth remembering Boston had the second best record in baseball in the month of July. Like they're, they're cruising right now too. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think Logan, uh, was, was pretty good. Yeah. He battled. And so, yeah. uh, props to him for that. And like you said, didn't have the best stuff today, but gave his team a chance to win. And that's all you can really ask. And, mm-hmm. uh, Thankfully, the Mariners' offense was able to pick up the slack a little bit today, so that's uh, that's good. Uh, so, lastly, before we get out of here, Gabe Spire uh, left this game in odd fashion. So he gets the first two outs, mm-hmm. and then gets to Raphael Devers, uh, who works a three-two count, and then Tom Murphy comes out to the mound, and then calls out the trainers and Scott Service to come out, and Spire's kind of laughing, whatever. And they keep him in the game. Uh, He throws, I think, two fastballs after that, both around 95 miles per hour. Devers ends up singling, and they end up taking Spire out of the game. It was a weird sequence um, because I don't think there was an injury there because, I mean, at least not something like a blister or an arm or shoulder because, again, he threw two strikes with you know, his velocity right (laughs) where it needs to be. So, have we heard anything on that front? I have not heard anything as of yet. I'm doing a quick little search here to see if maybe somebody put it in their post-game notes, but uh, no, I have, I have not seen it. Um, it was interesting, you know, the, the infield came in and, and they started laughing. Uh, so it must not be anything too serious. Um, we have some theories that we can't and won't share on the air. Don't try it. Ty. So, yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it is what it is, but uh doesn't sound like it's anything serious. If it was, or if it was anything potentially serious, they would have taken him out of the game because the Mariners bullpen right now, not exactly the deepest unit. I think you know why. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess he's okay. Cause there nobody's, nobody's tweeted about it. Nobody's put it in the post game report. Um, you know, which kind of leads me to believe that they've been asked not to for particular reasons. So We'll see. Just kind of, you know, adding things, you know, at, you know, trying to read between the lines here of everything that happened. Um, let's call it a back spasm and uh, just, you know, leave it at that. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It let, was let, so weird. Yeah. Let's just say the mirrors washing machine might have put in some work today. I mean, I don't let's not accuse anybody of anything. Like, I don't. I don't know. I don't, it's, you're going to feel bad if he actually has like a, like a lumbar issue or something, Ty. So I wouldn't, yeah, no, I, I, this. yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, if it is an injury, hopefully he's okay. But yeah, I, I, I have some theories, but we'll see. Ty has made up his mind as to what happened. Let's just, I'm very- just, I'm just connecting some dots. Okay. I see guys laughing. See, he might look a little uncomfortable on the mouth. I'm just saying, I'm just putting that out there. I I have not seen anything about Spire since he left the game. So right. So hopefully he's okay. And you know, it happens. Sure. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we get out of here? I just want to say mm-hmm. that unlike some people, okay, who listen to this show that we know oh, listen boy. to the show. I believe in the Seattle Mariners team and I Here think we. they're worth my investment. Sure. So, you know, take that for what it's worth, but mm-hmm. I'm investing what I can in this team. I mm-hmm. just wish certain other people would, you know, would have done the same, but uh too late for that, you know. So, cats out of the bag on that one, but I support this team. I think they're worth investing in. And you should too, Jerry. Oops. That's going to do it for our show. That's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners postgame show. For Colby Padnode, 
I'm Tyden Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Locked On Mariners. That's one word, Locked On Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the 6-3 to three win over the Boston Red Sox. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day. We'll see you next time. Peace. I believe. I believe too. <laughs>